People think I'm damaged goods. I'm worried about losing my job. Will I ever get a transplant? I want to see my children graduate from college. How can I afford this? I don't want to be a burden. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed with information. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever fall in love and get married. I just want to play with my friends. You're listening to Kidney Talk, streaming health, happiness, and hope to the renal community with your hosts, Lori Hartwell and Stephen First. Well, welcome to another episode of Kidney Talk. Today, we're going to be talking to Drew Thomas. He's been living with kidney disease since 1979. That's when he was diagnosed. So he's going to tell us about his journey. So welcome to the show, Drew. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about how you found out you had kidney disease. Well, I was entering my last year in college. I went to Virginia Tech, and I had to take a routine physical before I started school in the fall. And during that time, they found some albumin in my urine. And that looked a little suspicious, so uh, they did further tests. I had a biopsy done and found out I had uh, kidney disease. So that's really how it got started. And what, what kind of kidney disease? Did they label it? or called, it's a, it's a mouthful. Focus glomerulus sclerosis. Isn't it called FAC, FSCG for short? Yes. <laughs> FACG. They always have initials well, for well, things. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a very difficult, it's one of the most difficult kidney names to pronounce. That's right. So, uh, well, so um, when did you have to go on dialysis or get a transplant? Well, actually, I did pretty good. I went from 79 to the early 90s without any wow. in the intervention of, uh, or what have you. Matter of fact, my nephrologist told me when I uh, when kidney got to the point where I needed dialysis, he said, based on your disease, the state it was in in 79, I expected you to have a transplant or be on dialysis within five years. And I made it for 11 years, so I made it double the time. What would you do? Well, I was very athletic. I played a lot of sports, so I kept, kept, uh, kept my weight down kept my blood pressure pretty much at bay, and I believe that's what helped me. I was very athletic. I was very active. And you ate a lot of spinach, as I recall, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you started dialysis at what year? 1993. And did you choose hemodialysis? or? I chose hemodialysis. Uh, have you had any transplants? I've had two. You have? Two unsuccessful transplants. Did they last any time at all? Only last two weeks. Both times. Oh, why? Sounds like my story. My first two lasted two weeks. I have a strong immune system, and my body doesn't like foreign organs. Mm-hmm. You put an organ in, although you get give me the immunosuppressant drugs, it's just like drinking water. It's just like no effect. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, technology now, which um, I had the same problem. So uh, if you would like to learn more about that, um, there's actually, you know, I had 100% antibodies. I don't like any foreign objects either. And and this transplant's working great for me. So uh, there's hope. That's uh, right. So you've uh, been on in-center hemodialysis the whole time? The whole time, yes. Now, did you ever think about home dialysis? Uh, not really. Uh, I live alone, so I understand you, you need a partner for home dialysis. Well, yeah, you do, unless yeah, you can do everything. Yeah, it's recommended. Yeah, and, and, and what kind of uh, condition are you, uh, after you have dialysis, are you tired or are you low blood pressure? Actually not. I'm, I'm, I'm full of energy. Uh, a lot of times I leave uh, immediately from dialysis and go to social events, mainly to church, ch- church services, especially on a Friday Friday night, and I have no problem. Uh, what I usually do is go get me something light to eat and drink and head right to the, to the event. Well, and I understand you work, too. So you've, you're an amazing patient, which we're going to talk about because you wrote a book uh, or a booklet of how to be a successful dialysis patient. So... Tell us a little bit about how you manage dialysis and work and all these social activities. Well, um, simply put, I, I just do it. Uh, I just I just find the energy to do it. I, I uh, never stop working, and I think I think that is uh, is key because you 
don't focus on the fact you're a dialysis patient. You got other things you need to do to stay busy. Because if I didn't work, the focus would be on, woe is me, I'm a dialysis patient. So being able to work is, is, is paramount. And, and what do you do for a living? Well, I, I work for the University of Virginia, and I'm a uh, grants manager. Grants manager. Yeah, so basically it's an accountant position. I, I keep account of all the uh, grants and funds that the professors uh, gather for that research. And then he allocates it, right? You basically tell them if they have any money left to spend. So you're, 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 you're actually the money man. I'm the money man. I keep an eye on it to make sure it's, print, it's spent properly and, and so forth. Let them know what their balances are and what, what, what they need to do to, to spend the money. You know, you know, when Lori said you were a grants manager, when I grew up in Norfolk, Virginia, we had a, a, a store called Grants. Mm-hmm. And I thought you were a manager of a grants. <laughs> Well, if it was a pharmacy, it might help because if you take so many medications as patients, you might get a discount. <laughs> so, so tell me about your book. Well, uh, my brother, my older, older brother, uh, had really been on me for years to write a book, not a booklet. So the closest I could get was to put together a booklet. And because he, he said, with these many years you've been on dialysis and you've been so successful, you ought to put it, put it in print some of your successes and some of the tips and some of the, the things you've done over these years to, to be as successful as you are. So I just began to formulate it, and, and thus the, the booklet came out. I started last June, started hmm. writing it. And, and how does one get one of these booklets? Well, right now they can um, contact me via email, mm-hmm. and I, I'll send one out to them. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you uh, if you want to contact RSN, um, we have a link on our website. We'll make sure it gets to Drew. Well, tell us like some of the things you've learned. What does it take to be a successful person who's on dialysis for that many a years? A successful yeah. person who has to go on dialysis. Well, when when I started in the booklet, <clears throat> I focused on three key points to be successful. One is education. Two is discipline. And three is compliance or adherence. And the first thing I talk about in the book is education. And let me give you an example. When I first learned I had kidney disease, just like any average person, you thought, well, kidney function is to remove waste and toxins by producing urine, and that's how you get rid of it. But little did I know all the other functions of the kidney, which is help control blood pressure, help keep your chemicals in balance, mainly your calcium and your phosphorus, and all these other things that the, that the kidney did. And I said, well, if I'm, I've lost all this kidney function, that means I need to compensate or make up for what the kidney has, is not doing. For example, if, if the kidneys have controlled blood pressure, where well, it no, can no longer do that, That means I need to take my blood pressure medicine and and watch my blood pressure. Well, because the kidney no longer keeps your chemicals in balance, your calcium and phosphorus, you have to take supplements to help balance that to keep keep everything balanced. So the first thing that came to my mind was if the kidney is no longer doing its thing, I need to compensate for that by man-made man made means. And that's, that's what I set out to do. And how long um, are you on dialysis each time? I run uh, three hours and 45 minutes, three so, times a week. Let me ask you something. You're telling me about things you had to do and adherence and compliance and mentally, how do you, what do you do? Mentally, how do you, you know, face three times a week, you know, mentally when they told, I know that when I was shown a dialysis unit for the first time, it was the most depressing thing because everybody was about 30 years older than me. And, and they, they really looked like they were near death. And, 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 you know, so mentally, how did you handle it? Well, well, my situation is a little bit different in that the fact that I did lose two transplants and I lost them so quickly. So I looked at it as dialysis is my only option. That's where I looked at it. So 
I need to make the best of this option because if, without this option, I'm dead. So that's the, that's the way I went. So really, my attitude towards dialysis, in a way, I welcome dialysis because that was really truly my only option. So I said, well, since I'm having to do dialysis, I'm going to try to be the best and have the best quality of life that I could possibly have. So that was really started with my attitude. It really started with my attitude, how I looked at dialysis. Is the glass half full or the glass half empty? And which leads me, you know, the most difficult thing for people uh, on dialysis when they do three times a week dialysis is managing their fluid. Uh, do you have any tips and tricks um, of, of how you manage that part of it? Lori, I'm glad you asked that question because of all of the difficulties I had with dialysis, fluid restriction was the, the biggest. Just like I said earlier, I was very athletic. I played a lot of sports, so I drank a lot. Not not drank alcohol, but you, you know what I mean. Liquid fluids, water, sodas. It was so <laughs> difficult for me to back off that because of my lifestyle, I had drank a lot. So I, and another thing I found myself, I was at work, and I discovered an ice-making machine. So it looked like every 15 minutes I was filling my cup up with ice. Not thinking that if I let that ice sit at my desk, it would turn to water, and I would drink a whole bunch of water over a period of time. So I would go leave work, go to dialysis, and get on the scale, and be upset at myself because I was over whatever my target uh, uh, was for that particular uh, day. So what I had to set out to do was to literally write down anything I into as far as fluid. And I used to, when I first started, I used to get upset at myself because half the day had only gone by and I had already exceeded my whole daily allowance as far as fluid. So I had to literally write down what I intook as far as fluid. And then I gradually backed off from there. I said, I, it was a mental thing. I said, okay, well, you've had enough. You can't drink anymore today. You, that's it. You have to stop. Well, you know, it's probably one of the reasons you feel good when you are finished with dialysis because you they're not having to pull a ton of fluid off of you. Absolutely, Lord. That is the key. That is really, truly the key. If you can get your fluid restriction, fluid under control, that's half the battle right there. And I can attest to that. And you probably have to watch your sodium where you can't control your fluid. That's correct. It's too much stuff to watch. You know, it, it, it really does, I think, from your sports background and your discipline that it helps you a lot. Right. You know, that's one of the reasons why I went on home dialysis when I did, uh, because there's really no fluid restrictions. You could drink You were doing you it want. every day, right? Every Five day. Five or six days a week? Six days a week, yeah. Which is an option for people who, you know, they can't seem to get their fluid under control. And, you know, a lot of studies are showing that more dialysis is better. So um, have they increased your time over the years? No, they've, they've lowered my time. Because my numbers have improved so greatly today, reduced. I used to run four and a half, where well, four hours and fifteen minutes. Whoa! Then it went to four. Now it's three hours and forty-five minutes. And is everything good? Like your hemoglobin and your phosphorus? Do you want to share your labs? Yes, my labs are uh, outstanding. And the way I talk about this in the booklet too. I treat it as my report card. And you know, if, if, when you're in school, you use the report card. It determines how well you're doing or how bad you're doing and what you need to, be, need to improve on. I used to just throw that report card in the drawer and not look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I look at it a little bit differently. So, uh, so my, my labs are uh, outstanding. Now, in this booklet, is it your personal experience, or did you have to consult with, uh, you know, a physician to make sure the accuracy of the booklet was correct, or what? Ninety percent of the booklet is my personal experience, but I did consult with my nephrologist, the dietitian, the social worker, and several of the nurses at the dialysis unit. Mm -hmm. They read over, they proofed the book booklet uh, for accuracy and soundness. And do you uh, have other patients in your facility that, you know, you mentor? Or is there somebody who mentored you to get you to this place? No, not really. Other than not, not necessarily a dialysis patient, but it really was the, the 
health care providers, starting with my nephrologist that really guided me and told me the do's and don'ts. So I, I, I credit the health care providers as far, as far as that goes. Well, it's been now how long? Almost 20 years you've been on dialysis? Almost 20 years. It's 19 years this year. Wow. And what's the hardest thing for you about being on dialysis for that long? Uh, probably, I, I call Tuesdays my free day <laughs> because I don't have to. I don't have to go to dialysis. And what about Thursday? So, well, well, I have all, all the events to go to. So, really, Tuesdays my day where I, I I don't have to do anything. Oh, it just stays home, and you can just do what you want because you have obligations on other days. That's correct. So, I always think. What if I didn't have to go to dialysis at all? I would have five days of free days that I could kind of do, you know, what, what I really wanted to do. Not totally what I wanted to do, but it would be more and more uh, free time for me. And what, what hobbies do you have that you'd like to devote more free time to? I, I uh, like watching and going to sporting events. And I like to play golf, but I haven't, haven't played it mm -hmm. recently. But I, I like to get outside and, and play golf. So you have a lot of Cavalier paraphernalia? No, absolutely not. I, I, did I mention I'm a Virginia Tech Hokie? Oh, I because you worked in Charlottesville. Right. So I really yeah. get get I get ratted on all the time because I'm I went to Virginia Tech, which is the arch rival. Yeah, we used to call them the Hokey Pokies. That's right. Right. And uh, so you could probably retire from all the money you're making from this booklet, right? Right. I don't think so. <laughs> does does the booklet cost for the people or no? No, there's there's not a cost at right now, but uh, maybe later. Maybe next Tuesday there might be a cost. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, Drew, you you are very inspiring. I mean, I was on dialysis 13 years, and I just think that was a lifetime. And to think 20 years is uh, with you know, a wonderful attitude, still active in everything you want to do. You're just an incredible example to people who have kidney disease. So I thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Is it true you're running for Congress pretty soon? <laughs> you're, so, you're so inspirational and good, so. Thank you, Drew. Okay. Have a great day. We can control our own destiny. We can take charge of our health and ask questions about our medical options. We can form partnerships with our health care team. We can take steps towards self-improvement. We can be sensitive to the impact of our disease on our family. We can sing, dance, laugh, and enjoy our lives. We can appreciate today and look forward to tomorrow. We can help and support our fellow patients. We can pursue our hopes and dreams. We can make a difference. 